my screen? Yes, sir. We have completed the dialectic constant after calling the show. Okay. I, we have completed this part also. Dialectic yes. constant. Dialectic constant. This is completed? Yes, sir. Okay. This, <coughs> this thing. This thing is also completed now. Yes, sir. This was, yeah. There was some change okay. in the question at the end. Okay. Uh, this uh, till here means till here we have completed. Yes. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Are you sure now? I have completed till here. Yes, sir. And uh, do you have any doubt? Doubts? No, sir. Okay, so let's start our new topic. There are other students also, na? so that's why I am getting confused. No problem, sir. Whether I have completed the topic or not. Okay. Today we will discuss about the vectors, vector laws and all that thing. And we will revise some concepts of 11th class because uh, without revising those things, we cannot move forward. Okay. So that's why uh, I will try to revise mm -hmm. those things mm -hmm. for you. So we have... Uh, a principle superposition principle of superposition yeah 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 that's the same thing superposition principle and this principle is nothing but now let's see suppose here a charge is placed this is a charge and here is a charge here is a charge here is a charge and so many charges are placed like this suppose this is q1 q2 Q3, Q4, Q5. And th this is a charge have value Q0. And we know that, we know that from the Coulomb's law that between two charges, between two charges, there are forces of interaction. Between two charges, there are Forces of interaction of interaction and they will act in the line joining in between two charges like this. Okay. They will be in the line joining between two charges. At that time, I have told you this point is very, very important because now this is the application of that point. So in physics. Each and everything is important. Okay. So, due to this charge Q1, the force will be like this in this direction. This yes. charge is okay. I am taking Q0 as positive charge, and this is also a positive charge. No problem. And due to this charge, 
due to this charge there, there will be also a force of interaction in between q2 and q0 yes okay good okay so this is this one so i am representing the force due to q1 as f1 q1 as f1 and due to force due to charge q2 as f2 and in the same way we do these things for every charge that is placed and this is f3 and again i am doing for this is the force of interaction this is f3 and this is f4 this is f3 and this is f4 and so and you can make for n number of charges you can draw this for n number of charges Yes. And so the, the force the, of interaction is like denoted by F one, F two, F three, F four of those charges. Yeah, 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 yeah. But in uh, in a vector form. In a vector form. Okay. So this charge is Q naught. And and if I want to calculate, if uh, suppose here n number of charges are placed, n number of charges means. there can be a five charges four charges six charges QN. accordingly yeah uh, qn qn very good qn so now if i want to calculate the net force on charge q not that will be equal to and force is a vector quantity so here this is a sign of vector okay so we will calculate this for vectorically this is the superposition principle and nothing else like you can add them f1 plus f2 plus F three plus and so on plus F n. Right? Is it fine? Yes. Okay. So this is the superposition principle. So. now i am writing the you can say definition or whatever for a system of n interacting point charges for a for a system of n interacting interacting point charges net force net force on a given charge is vector sum of
forces due to individual charge due to individual charge individual charges sorry so individual charge or charges uh, due to individual charge okay so this is the superposition principle but but you should remember how to calculate this force that's important thing okay yes sir mean if give me a minute yes okay so uh, we should know how to calculate if i want to calculate the force on this charge due to all the charges this is the superposition principle please note it down and after that we will revise vector yes the whole story is all about vectors now completed yes sir okay so uh, now i am going to tell you about the vector but please don't think this is a time based thing because you will when you will get some idea about the vector then it will be very easy to solve the question okay so actually vector is a topic of 11th class but 
I will revise. I will try to finish that in a very short time. Okay. So. <coughs> Sorry. So now no. now vectors. Vector. Vector have magnitude Vector have direction And vector also follows the laws of vector This is a vector. For an example, for an example, and vector is represented by like suppose I am I am saying A is a vector. So I will write A is like this. A vector. <coughs> and for an example, I am saying that two Newton force due towards east, east, two Newton force towards east. <coughs> so two is the magnitude and east is the direction we know. East is the direction, east, west, north, north, and south. East. Good. So means, so two is a uh, magnitude and east is a direction. So this have magnitude and this has direction also. And it will also follow the laws of vector. So I can write this two Newton, this is a force. So I can write this force F as. 2 Newton view east. <coughs> and one thing more magnitude. <coughs> Magnitude of vector is represented by like this is force, so the magnitude of force will be like this. This is the vector now. And if I want to calculate the magnitude of this vector, so I will write like this. This is mod. What? What is this? This is mod f. Magnitude will be mod f. And I, I can say mod f will be only 2 Newton. This will be magnitude. This is the this is just the way of writing. Okay, that. And there is one thing more. Unit vector. <clears throat> Unit vector have magnitude. one and unit vector represented by unit vector up uh, now you can say if i am representing the unit vector of force like i am saying unit vector of force. So it will be represented by like F and this is cap. 
like we have pen and we have we have cap like this this force will have some cap so unit vector of force is like this represented by like okay and also so magnitude of this force magnitude of this vector will be one i can represent like this no problem <coughs> and there is uh, one another way also to calculate the unit vector suppose uh, <coughs> for the force if i want to calculate the unit vector of force i represent unit vector like this i have told you so i will i can calculate this i will write the value of that vector and i will divide that vector with the magnitude of that vector actually these all things are different these are not same if you say that <coughs> sir you have written f and f this no this is not about the f and f but you can say here is a mod in the f here is a arrow in the f here is a cap in the f so these things are, have different meanings <coughs> unit factor has cap and magnitude has mod which you said and if What? you want to, yeah like the lines um, beside f and for unit vector it's cap very good very good for vector it's it is arrow yes vector is vector is arrow. arrow suppose this this pen is a vector so what by what will uh, what will i do if i want to write i will draw an arrow on this pen and suppose i am saying if this vector is a unit vector and i want to write it on the copy so i will give a cap to this and if i i am saying this is a vector this is a vector and if i want to calculate the magnitude of this so i will enclose this in like this okay yes in this in this like this is known as mod actually this is in maths so we call it mod so no problem completed na till uh, you have uh, noted down vectors yes sir <coughs> sorry the yes, side of this still here uh, uh okay you have completed till here yes sir okay this one yes sir and 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 this one also all yes sir okay so now there are some more vectors universal unit vectors Universal, universal unit, unit vector unit vectors and these universal unit vectors are of three type like i if you take i and give them give it a cap like j cap and k cap but there is a reason behind it why this is like this so okay. if this is a y axis if this is x axis if 
this is z s so always always i vector will be along the y axis oh, sorry one minute i should use different pen i vector should be along this is i vector this should be along the x axis and in the same way you can say you can say j vector will will be along j unit vector will be along y axis y axis and k vector will be along not should be must be along z axis so actually these are the mathematical representation some someone has given and we are studying like newton has given his laws newton has given his laws now and we are studying yes so okay so like these all like i will be in direction of x axis j in y axis and k very in good very good very good and it's unit vector so it will have cap yeah. oh it is unit vector means it will have cap or also it has a magnitude of one like here i have written unit vector magnitude should be one so i am writing here so i cap <coughs> you i can say it unit vector along x axis and j cap this is unit vector along y axis i can also say that k cap is the unit vector along z axis <coughs> okay हेलो हाँ अच्छा मैं मेरी क्लास मेरी अच्छा अरे यार मेरी क्लास चल रही है अभी तो हाँ ओके अभी तुम कहा हेलो भूमि हेलो यस गिव मी जस्ट टू मिनट्स और वन मिनट वन मिनट ओके
okay <coughs> now these are unit vectors these are unit vectors and after that unit vector we have another topic in vectors like <coughs> How to write a vector in Cartesian form? Another topic is Cartesian form. So Cartesian form is like suppose I want to write a force or a vector. Like I want to write a force. so how would i write this force like f1 into i cap i can write f as f1 into i cap <coughs> f2 into j cap plus f3 into q cap so here you can see this f1 is a component of f in x direction component of x component of f in x direction see here na unit vector is along x direction so this force f1 must be the com component of force f in x direction so i am writing here this f1 is component what is the meaning of component component is like mm -hmm. a, like type or like a category of something component of force f in x direction similarly you can write for this or this also this is a component along y axis this is a component along z and if i want to calculate the magnitude of this force if i want to calculate the magnitude of this force so what will i do i will do like this this i will calculate the magnitude of this and <clears throat> this will is the uh, square of this mm. how should i represent actually i always try to represent the things that a student should understood in a proper way i can represent this in in a million on uh, number of ways but <clears throat> so simply you should say if you want to calculate the magnitude so sim simply you can square f1 plus f2 plus f3 square here f1 f1 is the magnitude of f1 f2 and f3 are magnitude represent magni choose of vector f1 vector f2 and vector this is completed note it down yes sir okay good so we have one question on here <clears throat> suppose there is a vector a and the component of the uh, vector is written in this form like i cap plus j cap minus 2 
के कैप एंड वी हैव टू फाइंड फर्स्ट कैलकुलेट फर्स्ट दिस थिंग एंड सेकेंड कैलकुलेट सो आई हैव टोल्ड यू दैट कैलकुलेट द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ एन यूनिट फैक्टर हाँ Oh, yes, yes, yes. So a we have to calculate the magnitude. How will we calculate the magnitude? How we how we will calculate the magnitude? Um, we have given the formula like ah uh, f one square plus f one square f two square f three square. square. Means here here is nothing. Here is only i. So we will take one square. Here is only j. so i am writing here only one square and here is what minus 2 you will take the square of the bracket plus minus 2 k square so this will become 1 plus 1 plus 4 4 that is 6 root 6 that is 3 yeah and if i want to calculate this is the unit vector of a unit vector of a so we have a formula i have already told you here this first we will write the vector and after that divided by its magnitude so means a vector divided by magnitude of a vector so we have we have a vector like i cap plus j cap minus 2 k cap what is the magnitude root 6 root 6 so this is the answer finish okay so i'll copy it okay <clears throat> so this is the question and uh, there is one another thing thing like parallelogram law parallelogram law <clears throat> so parallelogram law says like if there is one vector in this direction and there is another vector you can say in this direction suppose this is b vector and they makes an angle theta with each other then if we want to find the resultant of these two vectors then what we will do we will do some construction like we will draw a line parallel to this and we will draw a line parallel to this we should change the color okay and this thing has done and after that when i draw
a line means the diagonal of this parallelogram will be the resultant r okay r represents the resultant vector and that's vector a and b of parallelogram and as theta like where the angle goes okay mm -hmm. resultant vector okay no problem uh <clears throat> we have a formula also don't worry if you calculate the r the, hmm, for calculating the r there is a very good formula we have and i am supposing the angle between r and this a is beta so there is a formula and that formula is if i want to calculate the magnitude of r then i can write the a square plus b square plus 2 ab cos theta okay so this is the resultant if you want to calculate the resultant between two vector if you don't want to do this thing the construction we we will not not i we will not do this construction na on copy every time we will use this formula simply why we will do the construction making lines and all that when we have this are you familiar uh, are you uh, familiar with this formula before mm, parallelogram law no i just studied in this chapter we didn't study last year i don't know studying this okay, no problem. problem no problem no problem so if i want to calculate the angle between the resultant r is the resultant and this vector a then there is a there is another formula tan beta is equal to b sin theta a plus c cos theta okay now one thing more case one if two vectors are parallel r parallel so we will not use this formula this is vector a and suppose there is another vector b and these two vectors are parallel and if two vectors are parallel means what will be the angle between them angle between them theta equal to 0 degree okay yes theta will be 0 degree because they are parallel ha huh. because they are parallel so that's case one that's case one so if you want to calculate the resultant you simply add the vector simply add the vector and we will got the resultant if two vectors are parallel suppose if i am saying here is a vector of 5 newton here is another vector which is parallel to is this 6 newton and someone asked you the resultant don't go to this formula directly write r equal to 5 plus 6 11 11 newton okay in the case of parallel in the only in case of parallel okay so that will mention in the question right yeah it will be mentioned mentioned always okay anti parallel when two vectors are anti parallel like anti parallel means like this like this this is a pen this is a pen pen is going in this direction and this is my finger and finger is going in this direction means this is anti parallel 
and if if this finger and if this finger if this finger and this pen is going in same direction means parallel mm -hmm. so this pen and finger ha huh. okay so it's basically opposite to parallel yeah so if suppose if a vector is in the in this direction and b vector is in this direction so angle between them theta will be 180 degree and simply you don't go for that formula right r equal to a minus b <clears throat> like for example if here is 5 newton here is 6 newton and someone asks you what is resultant what will you do minus a okay yes sir so i wrote this and if in case two vectors are perpendicular 90 degree yeah so the angle is going to be 90 degree yeah okay suppose here is a vector vector a and here is another vector vector b and they are 90 degree with each other then resultant will be under root this you can you can get this from formula also also we have a formula of resultant a square yes, plus, plus b square, square plus ab cos cos 90 degree cos sorry cos theta. theta so what here theta is 90 degree na yes so i will put the value of a square plus b square plus 2ab and i will write here cos 90 and cos 90 is equal to 0 cos 90 is zero na yes so if this term is zero means this whole terms will become zero so what will we will have we will have this two d square plus b square that's why these results are coming actually all the results are coming from the formula itself i am not doing anything this formula is doing but <clears throat> it is better to learn these things because in these things will help you in solving the questions mm -hmm. now this is the end of vectors this is the end of vectors that mean nee, not the end of vector but for this chapter it is sufficient okay okay so now this knowledge of vector at least this knowledge of vector you should have at least now there is one more term so there is principle of superposition just like um, system of multiple charges yes yes the sup principle of superposition will be used when there are more than two charges like like here is a charge q1 okay okay and here is another charge q2 or and here is another charge q3 and this is like this the distance between q1 and q2 is a 
we will do questions then these things will be clear to you and distance is b and distance is c and someone said find the value of force find the value of force on charge q1 due to this q2 and q3 due to this q2 and q3 q3 then we will add the superposition principle is nothing but adding the force vectorically vectorically means uh, uh, let's see let's see the direction of force if this is positive charge will be like this f1 i am supposing this f12 and direction of force on this will be like this like f13 and if we know that theta angle between them we will get the resultant now with the formula yes so this is the application actually 2 f13 multiplied by f12 into and this is the theta so this is the superposition principle means you are adding the forces back with vector laws that's the superposition principle okay. this is the application this is the application okay so have you understood little bit yes sir so we will use these things in the coming topics that every then every picture will be clear because in physics na uh, when we say anything like i am saying mm, charge i am saying charge so charge can do a multiple of thing charge can do multiple of thing charge can produce electric field due to the charge there are electric forces due to the charge there are electric potential due to the charge there are capacitor and millions of things not millions of things means multiple things so this is just an statement this is just an statement it is a general statement okay and uh, in what, what we have done there what we have done in the previous question i have uh, there are only three charges means f1 f1 f2 and q0 there are three charges so i have add these two forces there so we can also say na we have followed the superposition principle okay yes sir okay anyway so there is a topic equilibrium and do you know a little bit about equilibrium do you have any idea about equilibrium 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 it's like something when like two things are equal and stable very good very good this is the most important thing in equilibrium means when the net force on the body is zero the body is in linear equilibrium means equilibrium you can say yes linear equilibrium so for equilibrium suppose here is a ball like football you can say and someone is pushing it this football with 20 newton force and another person is is watching like applying the force in this direction of 20 newton what will happen this ball will not, will move will not will not move means net force on this ball is zero why because these are two vectors and these two vectors are in opposite direction so resultant will be 20 minus 20 is zero zero that's why net force is zero and you can you can feel these thing physically you you can feel it like like see here this ball will move or not not move now no not move means 
this the position of this ball will remain same due to because the fo net force on this ball is zero so th that's why in equilibrium force on the body or a point mass you can say force net force on the point mass on the point charge you can say point charge or point mass is zero okay yes sir so so this is uh, the case of equilibrium i have given the example also what will be the equilibrium and why the force in equilibrium is zero equilibrium means <clears throat> the net force is zero this thing net force is zero so as um, an object or a body is in equilibrium when the total net force is zero I copied it, sir. Yeah. Uh, we have a class. Uh, this class. Uh, we have a Banar class, na? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, this is the end of this class. Okay. Uh, as uh, we have a class from six thirty to seven thirty. And uh, have you understood what I have taught? Yes, sir. And uh, if you have position principle, like types of vectors, the universal vector, and equilibrium. Yeah, no. And after that, I have told you vectors and universal vectors. unit vectors. Yeah, I, J, K, K, and then we did questions like okay. yeah, and then parallelogram law also. Parallelogram law, you can you don't uh, you should not take this law seriously. You should take seriously this Just formula. The formula. This formula, I am asking this star, and this formula, when when two vectors are parallel, you should know this, and we will use these things in question. You will see, then 